All right, welcome back. We continue live right here on Pittsburgh CW. Bob Pompiani with you until 11 o'clock. Taking your calls at 412-575-2600. Also at the number one Cochran Sports Showdown. That's coming up tonight, 1135. Starkey, Benz, Graves will join me. We have a lot to get into. But right now, we're going to get into your calls. Rapid fire. So when I call your name, go with your question. Jim in Greenville. Go ahead, Green uh, Jim, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I'm just totally appalled at, at some of the uh, coaching decisions that the Steelers made today. Fourth and one, fourth and inches. They don't go with the quarterback sneak. And with two minutes to go in the game, what were they thinking on doing an onside kick? They could have just kicked it into the end zone, brought them out to the 25, held them to three and out. Then we score, and we have, a, we have the option of going for two to win the game or, or going for the extra point and taking it into overtime. I just don't understand the coaching decisions at that point. Right. I think it was just Jimmy, you're absolutely right on all three. I would have agreed with all of those. And we said, uh, as you know, we've seen these fourth down in, in less than a yard situations before. For some reason, even though Roethlisberger has had unbelievable success with quarterback sneaks in his career, uh, Didi King Cabuala of NFL Network pointed out it was 18 for 19. It's almost automatic, and yet that never seems to be called. And Roethlisberger in his post-game press conference said, well, yeah, I don't know. I'm not in there. Well, so he made it sound like it's coming from Haley or Tomlin or both. Uh, but, you know, Ben could probably interject and say, hey, wait a minute, I can do this or whatever the case may be. But whatever the case, it didn't happen twice. When you throw the ball back five yards on a sweep play, I don't care how good Le'Veon Bell is, you're asking for trouble in that department. And then they throw down the field for Juju Smith-Schuster, who maybe should have made the play. But that's, again, a higher risk play there. And with uh, regard to the onside kick, you know, they had two timeouts. I think it was 2.17 left in the game. They had a two-minute warning plus two timeouts. If you kick it deep, as you described, and I would have done that too, you know, first of all, Jacksonville's still in that stage where they're just going to try to kill clock and likely go three and out. So if you're going to do that, why give them the ball in the field position they had to set up three more points as opposed to keep getting That's the only thing I had. I understand strategically Mike Tomlin decided at that point, I'd seen enough of my defense. It hadn't gotten anything done. You need to get the ball back. But you could have done it be just because I think Jacksonville would have been very defensive in their offensive game planning at that point. Let's go to Ed McCandless. Go ahead, Ed. And also, uh, just to piggyback on the last caller, uh, why not kick a field goal later in the game, too? You know, try another onside kick and get your team back on the field. And another glaring thing I saw in this game was just a weakness at middle linebacker. I mean, well, there's no question that Ryan Chazier's absence hurt them and they did not have anyone capable of filling in for him. So that's part of, you know, life in the NFL. But, uh, you know, I thought there should have maybe been a field goal early in the game when it was 14 to nothing. They had the first fourth and one. If you're going to try a sweep play, I'd rather try a field goal and at least get some points out of that situation. But they did not. There's a lot of second guessing. Coaches know this is how it works. Uh, when you go back, you probably have plays in your head you want to redo, and I'm sure Mike Tomlin and his coaching staff is doing that tonight. Uh, there was a lot of it. Defensively, man, I mean, I thought both the defensive and offensive line of Jacksonville died. I was surprised to say that. I'm still surprised to say, given what they invested in the Steelers' offensive line. All this money, and yet it seemed like they could not gain a surge there. Uh, you look at the defensive line, a lot of money involved there, too, and linebackers, Bud Dupree, Hardly heard from today. Big time playmakers, and they did not figure in the stat sheet. Hardly any pressure on Blake Bortles. Well, we talked about that being one of the keys in this game, and yet we saw none of it. Let's go to line four. That's Brian in Evansburg. Hey, Brian, welcome to the sports call. Hey, Bob, how are you? Good, thanks. Hey, I couldn't get a hold of you earlier this, this on your uh, other show. Yeah, it was a little busy day, but thanks for trying. I'm glad you got in now. Yeah. Hey, um, before I give you my point, um, was your station involved in that uh, threat that was made from that uh, Texas man? No, not to my knowledge. Oh, okay. Good thing then. Hey, I was very disgusted with this, the uh, with the game today. It was a terrible disappointment. I agree with the previous two callers. Uh, here's my point on who they should get rid of okay. for coaching yeah. and the coaching staff. The offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator. Well, first of all, Todd Haley's at the end of a contract. They're going to make a decision, and the fact that he didn't get a new one as of now does not bode well for him. I do believe, however, if you look at what they did in the second half of the season, they were on uh, a pretty good roll in terms of averaging over 30 points a game, which was their intended goal from the beginning. It was not there the first half of the season, but it really got better as the second half. They scored 42 points today, although I realize a lot of it was crazy plays. Fourth and five touchdown, fourth and 11 touchdown. They had more success on those fourth and long than fourth and one, which doesn't make sense. 
I think they'll do a full analysis of what happened, what went wrong, what changes need to be played. Bottom line is, you played Jacksonville twice, you gave up a lot of points. 30 the first time, 45, that's 75 points in two games against Jacksonville. So, apparently, they didn't get the job. And maybe it's just a matchup. That was a terrible matchup for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's go to Jim in Verona. Hey, Jim, how are you? Uh, good, Bob. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. I appreciate that. Um, I'm sorry, but i got to mimic the first caller. Anytime you got a six foot five, two hundred forty pound quarterback in one of the best offensive lines of pro football, and you can't get six inches, there's something wrong. Yeah, yeah I said. I, I, mean, you I, can... I got to blame it on the coaches. I really do. Yeah, I think that was uh, that was something that I'm sure I was stunned that they pitched the ball back. You know, the Le'Veon Bell five yards. Yeah, you know, to get one yard, you had to go six, and that didn't make right. a lot of sense to me. Right. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate the call. Line two we go. It's Billy in Brentwood. Billy, you're on the air. Hey, Paul. How's it going, man? All right. What's up, Billy? Tough night. Um, hey, I, the reason I called is that everybody's dogging Todd Haley, but, you know, the Steelers put up 42 points today. So let's not let's not be so quick to run Todd out of town. Um, when he and my wife were sleeping together. <laughs> hey, listen, the bottom line is if you're going to look for one major factor today, that would be defense. They could not get off the field in critical times. Right off the bat, the Steelers deferred, which means that you expect your defense to, you know, go out and, and make a stand real quick, get the ball back, and now you have it, and also get it to start the second half. Instead, play action, boom, down the field, pass, 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 and then a four-net run. They made it look easy. And then after a turnover, they go in one play later. The defense could have bailed Ben Roethlisberger out at that point. They did not. It was a, it was a touchdown run right after the interception. And then after that, more of the same. I mean, they dug a huge hole based on inability to make plays and put pressure on this quarterback. And, you know, maybe uh, when Jacksonville goes to New England, they'll be able to put the kind of, you know, game plan together that'll be good to neutralize or at least try to slow down Tom Brady. But I'm going to be interested to see what New England does to deal with uh, Jacksonville's offense, especially in the red zone where they've had a lot of success and certainly five for five today. Buster in Greensburg, you are now on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Hi, Bob. Hi. Hey, uh, what's your uh, assessment uh, of the officiating today? Were there any significant issues that could have turned things one way or the other? I, I, I was not even looking at that, only because I thought the reason they lost was self-inflicted. All of these plays that happened, big plays. But I will say this, I thought... You know, first of all, there there are holding calls on every play. You got to be selective when you call them. But I thought the one play where Roethlisberger was taken down after he threw the ball, it was and and I forget who it was. It should have been a roughing call, uh, just because you're not supposed to do that to the quarterback. Yeah, if that, that were Brady, big. that would guaranteed or any other quarterback like that. Roethlisberger, because he's six five, two fifty, doesn't get those calls. But I thought, yeah, that, I thought that was big. But overall, yeah. that had nothing to do with the outcome of the game. The outcome of the game was determined by the by the Steelers' game plan, lack of execution of it, and just being outworked, out executed, out everything. And don't underestimate the distractions. You know, we kind of downplayed that because you've heard that they've had distractions all year and they've overcome them. Well. Apparently, it resonated in the Jacksonville locker room. All of these things that they've heard, starting with Mike Mitchell, when, whenever he was quoted by Sports Illustrated, says, hey, we could take on New England. We'll beat him in Haiti. We'll beat him in hell. We'll beat him in Foxborough. Well, those guys were chirping about Mike Mitchell before and after the game in the Jacksonville locker room. So, well, you've got to give Jacksonville a lot of credit. They were the superior team today, too. They really were. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate the call. Yep. we got Rob, Bill, and Bill. we got to take a break. We'll also talk some hockey with you again. A big win for the Penguins. We now move ahead in the New York Rangers. So let me know what you think about all of this coming up live right here on Pittsburgh CW.